Get my six. <clears throat> What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the most awesomest homesteading channel on the entire internet. It has absolutely nothing to do with homesteading. Homesteading off the grid. And uh, welcome if you're watching the, the video from the link uh, attached to our Facebook page, Sick Twisted Humor, or our new Instagram account, which is Sick Twisted Humor. Thanks to all of you who support me on all of those different multiple platforms. <clears throat> so this evening, I've got another story for you. Sent in from a viewer named Rob. Uh, I'm going to read you his story and perhaps another, depending upon the time here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Rob was inspired to send in his story. Uh, Robbie Baker. There it was. I was looking for his last name. Sorry, Rob. Um, just printed this off. Uh, he mentions it in his story, so I'll go ahead and just get to it. These are these are stories submitted by a viewer. Um, uh, true experiences with uh, supernatural slash paranormal type, type thing. And Rob gave us our, his permission to use these stories, so we're going to read them here on the YouTube channel, and we're also going to put them in uh, True Hauntings Volume 5, Personal Experiences with Paranormal, Cryptozoology, UFOs, Aliens, any of that stuff. If you guys have anything like that, any stories, send them to us in an email. The email address is crazylakeatmail.com. It should be in the description box below. Now, to the story. Hi, Kevin. You recently read a letter slash email from a guy named Ethan. Yes, that was Ethan Hodge, 19 years old down in South Carolina. So shout out and thank you to you, Ethan, for inspiring Rob to send us a story. Ethan sounds like a good guy. His story brought back memories from my own life. It is almost like we have a lot in common despite the fact he is 19 and I am 47 and from a completely different generation. We have experienced a lot of similar things. I decided to write to you and tell you a few of my own experiences. I had heard of the Gray Man before. Now, that's a, uh, an urban legend down in South Carolina. That's the story Ethan sent in. Supposedly, if you see this apparition of like a man in a gray uniform uh, who's believed to be a dead uh, Civil War soldier... And he tells you to leave because the wind is coming. It means you need to leave because a hurricane's coming. And there's been documented cases for the last century or more where this has happened. <clears throat> you can go back a few videos and see that. Um, okay. Um, Rob continues. He thinks he saw something about the gray man on YouTube several years ago. My brother-in-law retired from the Air Force. He was stationed in Charleston, South Carolina when Hurricane Hugo hit. I was just a kid, sixth grade, I think, but I remember my family driving there the day after the storm to get my sister and brother-in-law back up, back up there and haul supplies they may have needed during the cleanup and recovery process. Their apartment wasn't damaged, but I remember seeing the destruction all around the area. It looked like bombs had been dropped. It was the first, but unfortunately not the last time I would see this type of destruction. I lived in Pensacola, Florida for 10 years and was there for Hurricane Hurricanes Ivan, Dennis, and Katrina, or Denise, or, or Dennis, no. I had moved back to Georgia by the time Hurricane Matthew hit, but the area I live in now received a lot of wind damage from that one too. During the summer between my first and second grade years, my grandma, my dad's mom, became unable to live by herself any longer, so she moved in with my family. My sister, who is nine years older than I am, was my summer babysitter during that time, so she also helped our grandma if she needed anything. One day, my sister had walked next door to the neighbor's house for some reason. She was only to be gone for a few minutes. My grandma and I were in the living room watching TV during the few minutes she was gone. My grandma asked me to get up and change the channel. We didn't have remote controls for everything in those days. As I was walking to the TV to change the channel, I heard her cough. She died instantly. I knew something was wrong, so I ran next door to get my sister, but it was too late. This experience caused me to have nightmares for a long time. <clears throat> yeah, I think I see that too. You keep watching back there. 
See if it gets up and walks away. Geez, how did I miss that in the beginning? All right, back to Rob's story. Fast forward to my third grade year. My other grandma died while I was in school one day. I remember my aunt coming to the school and getting me. We went to the hospital, uh, but my grandma was already gone by the time we got there. A few nights later, after her funeral, we were at her house with my grandpa. I was walking down the hallway going to the bathroom. The bathroom door was right across the hallway from the back door uh, of the house. The master bedroom was at the end of the hallway past these doors. This was the way most mobile homes of the time were built. As I was walking down the hallway, I saw my grandma come through the back door, turn right and go into her bedroom. The door was locked as it always was after dark. She didn't open the door, she passed through it. She was wearing a pink nightgown. I saw her I just got a chill and it's like the temperature here just dropped by 10 degrees and it's not from the breeze. I feel it with me knees. Somebody please give me some cheese and explain these strange frequencies as the veil begins to thin. On with Rob's story. She was wearing a pink nightgown. I saw her clearly from less than 20 feet away. This wasn't something I thought I saw out of the corner of my eye. I looked right at her. I saw her full form or body or whatever you want to call it clearly, except for one thing. She didn't have any feet. She wasn't walking. She was literally floating. I never told anyone about this experience until a few years ago. I don't remember how the topic came up, but I was talking to my dad and my sister. I told them what I had seen. It was then my dad told me my grandma had been buried in a pink nightgown. Neither of them doubted what I was telling them. <clears throat> when I was in high school, we moved to a new property. After a few years, my aunt and uncle put a mobile home on our property next door to our house. My uncle and I were very close. We spent a lot of time together. He died in 2014. My aunt moved into an apartment in town because she couldn't afford to live in the house alone. The house was sold and moved off our property to a new location. She died in 2019. My uncle smoked cigarettes. I quit smoking in 2012. My dad lives with me. He doesn't smoke either. Sometimes, usually late at night, but occasionally during the day, I smell cigarette smoke. We live on several acres with excuse me with no neighbors nearby <clears throat> our closest neighbor is well over 100 yards away and neither of them smoke either but i occasionally smell the distinct smell of someone smoking a cigarette i always laugh and tell myself my uncle is just checking on us to make sure we're okay you guys getting my six for you newcomers that means watch behind me because you never know who or what may or may not show up during the recordings of these videos. On with Rob's story. <clears throat> Ethan's letter to you brought these memories back to me. However, I will tell you about something else I still experience frequently, as recently as a couple of nights ago. This always happens late at night. I'm a night owl, so it is usually well after midnight when I go to bed. My dad is the opposite. He is usually in bed by 22.30, which is 11.30 p.m. <clears throat> I sometimes wait until late at night after he is in bed to take a shower. Sometimes, while I'm in the shower, I hear music playing. It sounds like the music is coming from the living room, but no one is in the living room. The lights in the TV are turned off when I take these showers late at night because I usually go to bed when I'm done. The music stops instantly when I turn the shower off. The volume of the music is just loud enough. I can tell there is music playing, but never loud enough I can identify the actual song or type of music. I also hear the music sometimes after I go to bed. I have gotten out of bed several times and walked into the living room thinking my dad may have been 
awake for some reason and watching TV at 3 a.m. The living room is always dark and empty when I go check. The sounds always stop when I walk out of my bedroom door. There's a radio in the living room, but it isn't even plugged in. The cord is under the table it is sitting on. No one could plug that radio in and turn it on without me hearing them, even if I am in the shower. <clears throat> I hope you enjoyed reading this. These are just a few experiences I've had over the years, and a couple I still experience. I have more, lights flashing, shadows moving, etc., but nothing with enough specific details to share. There is one other experience I had about a year ago on my property, but it doesn't really fit the narrative of these experiences. It was more of something way more paranormal, and I don't even really know how to tell it in a context that you or your readers can understand, but maybe I will work on it. Feel free to share these experiences with your audience. My name is Rob, and I really enjoy your channel. The end. Thought I heard a tree knock. Rob, thank you so much for sharing your experiences with us and uh, giving me permission to share your stories. They're wonderful stories. Um, I it, And I emailed Rob back, folks, and I challenged him to give us a shot to wrap our minds around the story that he said happened about a year ago, something more paranormal, not associated with these stories. Uh, Rob, I bet you that myself and a ton of people who watch these videos might be able to shed some light on your paranormal experience. So again, accept my challenge, write that story, email it to me. I'll come here, read it to the folks, and we'll take like a like a poll. We'll ask everybody, what do you think it was that, that Rob experienced? I mean, this might be a really good way to help you understand in more detail what it was you experienced. So <clears throat> folks, the other one I think I'll save for another time because I don't want to try to make your mouth water, but my wife right now, my beautiful bride dearly, aka Giggly Girl, is in the house cooking crab legs, uh, sea scallops, and catfish. So it's seafood night at our house, and I'm going to go eat some of that. So again, Rob, thanks for your story. Ethan, another shout out, and thank you for inspiring Rob. Folks, if you've got a personal story, and maybe it happened to somebody you know, okay? Uh, you know of something weird that happened to a relative or a friend, share it with us. The email is crazylake at mail.com. Give us your permission to use the story so we can read it here on YouTube. We'll put it in a true hauntings volume. Um, hey, these strange things happen. You're not alone if you've experienced them. There's strength in numbers by sending your stories in. You, you get to see. You're helping other people realize, no, they're not crazy. No, they're not weird. Uh, just there's some stuff out there that can't be explained. And here was some evidence of that. So thank you for joining me here, the most awesomest homesteading channel on the planet that typically doesn't have anything to do with homesteading. Uh, thank you if you're seeing this from our Facebook page, Sick Twisted Humor, or our new Instagram account, Sick Twisted Humor. Thanks to all of you who support me and my family by way of uh, watching our content, watching our videos, interacting with the posts on Facebook and Instagram. Appreciate every single one of you. See you for more next time.